Hey everyone, welcome back to the studio. I'm Tammy at Tam's Creative Corner and today I've got a couple things going on that I haven't tried before. One is I'm gonna do a really big acrylic pour. It's gonna be 40 inches by 16 inches, so a big long narrow piece. And the other thing I'm gonna do is it's gonna be on canvas. You know I like to work on wood panels, but I thought I get so many questions about how do I work on canvas to do my pours and my resin and how do I prep it? So with my husband's help, who's an oil painter, he taught me how to prep the canvas and we're crossing our fingers that it's gonna hold the weight of the acrylic pour and the beautiful resin glossy top coat that I'm gonna put on it because you know I always do that. So wish me luck and if you wanna join me on this journey of trial and experiment, let's get started. So we sealed the canvas with Liquitex Clear Acrylic Gesso and we just sprayed a little bit of water on it to make it a little thinner. And then with a very cheap bristly brush, we just put it on the canvas and he taught me to put it in a crisscross shaped pattern. That way it really gets into the grooves of the canvas and really helps seal it. So once that's dry, we sand it down with fine sandpaper and you can see all the ridges in it. I didn't get rid of all the ridges, but you can feel to the touch that the canvas is smooth. And we repeated this process two times before moving on and taping the back like I normally would on my wood panels. And after I have my tape applied to the back of the canvas, I'm just burnishing it with a wood stick so that it creates a better seal. Now we're ready to move on and make sure this canvas is level. Really important when you're working in fluid art. You don't want all your paint to run off to one side. Arteza was kind enough to reach out to me and ask me to pick out some acrylic paints that I'd like to use in a pour. So I got this set of metallic acrylics because you know how I love to mix and match my colors and there was just an endless variety of colors in this kit. And I also picked out their outdoor acrylic paints just because I wanted to play with them and I really like the colors and they're supposed to be a little more durable. And then of course I got their white premium paint because I use a lot of whites in my paint pours. And they have lots more to choose from. So check that out below and there's also a coupon code down there for a limited time. Meanwhile, I'm going on to use my Floetrol, which I always mix with my acrylics. It gives it a longer life and makes it more fluid. I'm putting my white acrylic by Arteza in and I shake that up really good before moving on and adding water. You'll notice I'm measuring out and marking how much I use because I'm trying to get a formula down for how I like my white. And then I do the same with the colors that I add. I start with Floetrol, I add the paint color, then I shake it up and then I add the water. And you can see that I like to mix and match my paints to get the color I'm after and that's what I'm doing here. I did this with my pink magenta color and I also did it with my blue. And metallics are usually pretty tough to mix but these metallics mixed in really great so I'm really happy with that. And now that I've got my colors all mixed up the way I like them and at the right consistency, I move on and pour my white over the canvas. I've done a lot of resin pieces this big, but I've never done a paint pour this big. And the canvas was something that I wasn't quite used to. So I was just kind of winging it here. And you can see I poured quite a lot of white on, which is why I mixed it in that gallon jug, just because I didn't know how much I would need in the end. And then using Rinska's technique, I took the hair dryer to spread it out because it was such a large surface. I'll link her channel below. She does amazing Dutch pours. And now that I have my white all laid out on the canvas, I begin adding all of my colors. And I just kind of blend them and swirl them over each other. But what I learned is that I didn't use enough color to begin with. And so you'll see that I had to go in and add more later on. Mm -hmm. 
As you would in a Dutch pour, you then pour white paint along the side of the color because then you blow dry it over the color and that creates cells and some cool effects. But like I said, unfortunately, I wasn't generous enough with my color pigment and so learn from me. Go heavy on your color. You can always add in more white, but in my case, I had to add in a bunch more color. So it didn't turn out like I'd hoped, but it was still kind of a cool piece in the end. At this point, I realized the error of my ways, but I'm gonna blow it out and see what's underneath and then I will start um, manipulating it, adding in more color, and seeing what I can create out of this piece. And this is what we call a learning experience. In the end, it kind of turned out cool. It wasn't what I was going for, but my husband was there and he was chiming in that it started to take on the look of a topographic map of like a canyon. So I kind of went with that theme and that's um, why it is the way it is. And I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. But please be gentle and very sensitive. <laughs> so anyway, this is the process and I spent quite a long time, like an hour plus, um, just adding color, manipulating it. I used the hair dryer, I used a straw, I used a popsicle stick and I just kind of decided, well, we'll just go for it. When I don't like a section, I just take my white and pour it on and cover it back up or move my paint around with it, you know, because I have so little white on this canvas. But um, yeah, that's how I usually remedy when I don't like the way something's looking composition wise. One of the benefits of adding that flow trawl to your paints is your working time is like forever. So it um, is now time to let this dry. I have it to where I like it and I know I'm going to add glitter and resin. And it took three full days for this piece to dry before I could move on. It's hard to tell here but I really love the way the metallics are shiny after it dried and you really see that pop out when the resin coat's added. So now I'm going in with my glitter glue and I like to pick a color or two on my piece and I just kind of accent that with the glitter. You can use glue and then lay glitter down or just get different colored glitter glues. And then once that dries I move on to my resin and I'm using art resin. It's a two part resin and I make four cups total. And then I had to stir this for quite a long time. Usually on my smaller pieces, it's like three minutes, but this was like 10 to 15 minutes just to get it all mixed properly. And that's really important when you're working with resins. If you want to learn more about mixing and coating an acrylic piece with resin in more detail, I'll put a video link above for that. So we continue on with our learning lessons with this piece. And one thing I wished I would have done was put cardboard in the back of the canvas to help support the middle so it didn't sag. 
And the other thing I could have done was put a really thin coat of resin on to begin with and then move on to a thicker coat. So I think either of those two things would have made this even better. But honestly, I was surprised. My um, canvas did sag a little in the middle, but I think because I put so much resin on, it really doesn't look terrible. It's a little lighter around the edge of the canvas, so I may pour another coat. But it looks pretty darn good considering I hadn't done something like this. So you can see once that sparkle and that resin's on, it really takes on a whole new life. And so I think I'm going to go with my husband's theme and call this one Canyon Girl. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned right along with me. If you like what I'm doing, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below, and give me a thumbs up because all of that helps me out a lot and keeps these videos coming. And if you want to see what I consider a successful acrylic Dutch pour, I'll put a link above to that. Have a great day and happy creating!